Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Please, please let me know if it's not showing. Looks yeah. good. Thank Can you. Everyone for... see it? Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to start off. Um, I'm going to put a Google form in the chat. So that Google form, um, if you have any questions that you think of while I'm I'm going through and you don't want to ask it in the chat or, you know, later on you, you're thinking of a question, if you click on that Google form and I'm going to share it at the end of the presentation, um, it, it's going to go um, on a sheet and I can send it out to the counselor um, and ask a couple questions, just your name, um, your grade and then what school you go to so I can share it with the appropriate uh, counselor. So again, I'm Corey Lowe, school counselor by Comico High School. And I'm going to go over um, over uh, the high school graduation requirements um, using X2, Family Portal, and Naviance, and then kind of going over what advanced placement courses are. Um, and then that'll lead into the dual enrollment conversation um, with Mr. Harris and Ms. Shiles. So what credits do I need to graduate? So this is where it gets a little confusing depending on when you enter ninth grade. So students entering ninth grade prior to the fall of 2021, um, those students need four English credits, three math credits, three science credits, three social studies credits, and then one credit of fine arts, physical education, and then technology. Um, and then those students only need a half credit of health. Um, of course, they need their completer, which can be two years of foreign language, um, or a CTE completer um, with, with advanced technology. Uh, students who enter ninth grade prior to the fall of 2021 need 21 credits. So the changes for students who entering ninth grade in the 2021-22 school year. So instead of the three math credits, those students need four math credits. And then it flip-flops with the health and the uh, PE. So you need one credit of health, and then one half credit of physical education. Um, and then instead of the 21 credits, you need 22 credits to graduate. So that again changes from the 21 to 22. Um, your counselor is gonna go over when they do scheduling, gonna go over your credit check and make sure you're in the correct um, classes that you need for graduation. Um, so don't stress too much about that because your counselor again is gonna walk you through when they have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with you um, when you're doing scheduling. So next up, registering for X2. So X2 is very, very important where you can check attendance, you can check, you can check grades, you can see everything that a teacher, an administrator, a counselor can see um, from your computer. So parents and guardians, um, you have your separate ID. So setting up that ID is the student's full last name, all lowercase, no special characters and spaces, and it can't exceed 14 characters. Then you put in their last five digits of their local ID number, which that ID number you can find on their progress report or report card. And then you put their first initial at the end of that. So my example, John A. Smith Jones, he has an ID number um, ending in 98765. So his login would be Smith Jones 98765 with the last uh, J at the end. Setting up the password is a lot easier. Um, so it's the student's five digit lunch number. Again, that can be found, um, the student can tell you um, the lunch number is also on the schedule. Um, his lunch number is 98765. So your temporary password will be 98765. The, the one thing I wanna touch on is when you put in that, that temporary password, it's gonna pop up with an error. And sometimes students and parents see that error and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. It's just gonna have you create a new password. Um, so don't be scared when you see that error come up. Logging with the student ID. So students, they log in with that ID every single time they log in with their computer. So they're really, really good with getting into their X, um, X2. I will say when they first log in, students use their lunch number with three additional zeros to get into their computer um, when they log in for the day. When they first log in with their X2, they don't use the additional zeros. So um, going over their ID, it's their last name, um, spaces and special characters removed, and doesn't exceed 14 characters. Instead of with the parent where the first initials at the end, their first initials before the local ID number. So again, John A. Smith Jones, he has a local ID number ending in 98765. His login would be Smith Jones with the J first, 98765. And again, with that password, instead of your lunch number with extra zeros, 
um, three extra zeros, it'll be two, three, four, five, six. So this is an interactive PowerPoint. So when Ms. Um, Scheller sends it out, you can actually click on the links and it'll take you directly to sites on the board um, website that will help you. Um, so that site that you click there will take you right to the instructions for logging into X2. So Naviance. So Naviance is a web-based program for academic planning, college and career research. Uh, Naviance helps students and families connect with uh, what students do in the classroom to their life goals, including finding colleges and career based on their personal skills and areas of interest. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate Naviance. So I'm going to unshare my screen. And I'm hoping everyone sees Clever at the top. Correct. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and show um, how you get to Clever. Every single student's able to get into Clever. Um, so it actually pops up on their computer when they log into Google Classroom for the when they're on their internet. Um, so you click in the right corner, log in as student. And then it looks a little different for me because I'm, in a, um, I'm a counselor, but either I'll have login with Active Directory, which students can use, and then it also has another option. If they click login with Active Directory, it should log them directly right into their Naviance or their Clever, my apologies. So Clever pops up. Naviance is going to be under college readiness. Um, so what I do, and, and I encourage my students to do, is just heart the Naviance button. So every time they go into Clever, Naviance stays at the top. So they don't have to go and search because they actually have more um, options than I do on, on my screen. So when you click on Naviance, it's going to log them directly into their Naviance account. And it's going to look not like that, but it's going to look like this demo student here. And I probably could spend 30 minutes going through Naviance um, and all the good things that um, Naviance has. I'm just going to touch real quickly on a couple of big, big um, topics that we cover and that they're probably using in middle school. So at the top here are those topics that they can choose from. The self-discovery um, tab has all of the assessments that they can take to get an idea of maybe careers, um, majors that they're interested in doing. Um, again, you can start those assessments. Um, by clicking self-discovery, and you can click on them individually, um, but a lot of students click on that self-discovery home so they can start those assessments. So going from those assessments, um, we have careers. So here in careers, you can go ahead and you can search careers, you can find careers that you're interested in. The assessments that they take can actually lead them to um, the career, um, finding in, in, in careers that they're interested in on this, on this site. Um, Again, you can search them, um, you can explore them. I could go in into detail here. Um, just real quickly, if you explore a career and you find that title. Um, so I always use counselor as my um, as my example. And if you go over and you click on the favorite button, it's going to add it to a favorite list that won't go away. So that favorite list is going to follow them from if they're an eighth grader, all the way until their senior year and they're you know, finding majors that they might be interested in doing. Um, again, when you find that favorite list, you go up to the top and click careers, favorite and careers, and that topic will, or that career will show. Um, again, a lot of that comes from that self-discovery. Um, you can explore careers specifically. You can explore the clusters and pathways um, that, those student, that you might be interested in. Next up is colleges. And colleges, that one could last an hour, a presentation on going through, um, doing your super match college search um, and, and finding that and building that college list. Um, so if you click on super match college search, I'll do this one briefly. Um, you can actually select criteria to find certain colleges that meet that criteria. Um, so for example, to, to kind of be brief, um, you can go to the top and select it by location, academics, admissions, so on. So if I wanted to look at every single college um, in Naviance that's in the state of Maryland, if I just search Maryland and then close out and scroll down, I can see every single college in the state of Maryland here. Well, now I want to search it by the certain major. So if I go up to academics, click on bachelor's because I want a four-year degree, and I search accounting. Accounting. 
I can now see every uh, school in the state of Maryland that offers accounting um, as a major. You could play around with this for, for hours. Um, and again, similar to the careers, if you favored it, you could go and click you know, a few colleges you're interested in and then go to colleges and then colleges I'm thinking about, it's gonna add them to that favorite list. Um, so again, you can find that. And again, Naviance is designed for students. There's nothing you're gonna click in Naviance is gonna mess anything up. Um, so feel free you know, to explore um, the self-discovery, the careers and the colleges section of Naviance. Real quick, I wanna to touch on the resume section. Um, so if the student goes up to About Me and clicks on Resume, they can actually use this to build a resume, which is really, really important. And you can see here, I was going over um, starting a, a resume with a student showing them um, how to add their work experience. So you can update sections by clicking the pink button. And it has from objective all the way down to leadership. Um, and it's very, very user-friendly. Um, you click into that section, you put in the information, and then when you're done loading, um, it looks like it did when I had the, the Burger King um, logo there. Let me go back. And so then you can build the sections. You go to print export and you can actually download that PDF um, version of the um, resume. Again, very, very easy, very, very user friendly. Um, it's, it's a great tool that a lot of our students uh, utilize. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to exit out because I can see my time is coming down to an end. I'm going to go back to my presentation here. Oops. Um, again, this is accessing through Clever. So if you have any questions, you can use these um, instructions. Uh, again, clicking Active Directory usually helps, um, but if sometimes the computers can act a little um, little different. Um, so if you follow these instructions, they work um, the same. So the last topic I'm touching on is AP. Um, so the AP program offers college level courses and exams that you can take in high school. Um, so this is gonna lead perfectly into the dual enrollment conversation after, um, after uh, my presentation. So why you should take AP classes, you can earn college credit when you take the exams and, and by getting certain scores on those exams. Um, AP classes save money and time because you're paying for an AP exam instead of paying for um, either a three or four credit class in college. Um, they stand out. So taking those AP classes and having them on your transcript, um, they build that transcript up so colleges are, are impressed to see um, how many AP classes you are taking. Um, it keeps your options open. So, you know, taking AP classes um, allows you to, to take more classes by meeting prereqs. And then also um, by taking those classes in school, you can take more subjects. You get that taste of college. So you get to see, you know, the, the workload of a college class. Um, and that goes on developing those college skills, so those studying skills um, and, and making sure that you're staying on top of your work. Um, you might discover your passion. Um, the next slide I have shows all the AP classes that we offer in Wicomico County. Um, you might find one of those AP classes interesting, and it might lead you into a, um, to you majoring that in college. And then also boosting your GPA. So AP classes are weighted a point higher than, than a regular class. Um, so instead of earning a 4.0 for an A, um, like in a regular class, an AP class, you actually earn a 5.0 for, for getting an A. Um, this is going to be a big discussion. I'm sure uh, Mr. Harris and Ms. Uh, Shiles will touch on this. Um, when it comes to the transferability of AP and dual enrollment classes, you want to make sure you contact the school, um, the two-year or four-year institution you're interested in. Um, some schools, you know, it, AP classes transfer easier than dual enrollment classes and vice versa. Um, the link that I have at the bottom of this presentation, actually, you can go in and look at the transfer um, transferability of, of classes um, to schools in the state of Maryland. What AP classes you can take. Um, so we have a, a, a wide range of AP classes. Um, if you click on the button on the bottom of the presentation, you can actually um, go in and um, you can go in and see um, directly on page 11, these um, AP classes. Um, and then also I encourage you go directly to the AP website. Um, if you click the button on the presentation, it'll take you directly to the AP website to get a more, um, get more information about why and uh, why you should take AP classes. Um, again, I'm gonna keep the Google form up. So if you, um, I'll put it in the chat again. If you have any questions, please feel free to share.